For this project, you're going to need a weight one fingering or sock weight yarn, a 3.25 millimeter hook, and a pair of scissors. So I just wanted to show you guys that you can make this wrist warmer using any type of yarn and any type of hook. Obviously over here, this is the one that I am showing you guys today where I use the fingering weight yarn with the 3.25 millimeter hook. But over here is a chunkier version where I used worsted weight yarn with a six millimeter hook. And this is the exact same pattern. It's just a different weight uh, yarn and a different hook size. So if you guys want a quicker project, then I recommend just using a chunkier yarn and a larger hook. Now, just a quick overview of what's gonna be in this video. All we're gonna be doing is making one rectangle and then we're gonna be seaming together both ends and then leaving a little hole for our thumb. So this is a very simple construction. It'll be great for beginners. So starting this project off, we're gonna be making a row of foundation single crochets. And before we do that, you want to get an idea of how long you want your wrist warmers to be. So they're gonna start somewhere above your knuckle and below your fingers, and they can go however far down your arm you would like. So just kind of get an idea of about how long you want that to be. And that is going to be the length that we make our first foundation single crochet row. So that row is gonna be however long we want our wrist warmers to be. So to get started making a foundation single crochet, you're first gonna chain up two. Then you are going to insert your hook into the second chain from the hook or the very first chain that we made. And you're gonna pick up both the front and back loops like this. Now you're gonna yarn over, pull through just that chain. Okay, and now you're gonna have two loops on your hook. So now you'll yarn over and pull through just that first loop. Okay, with two loops on your hook again, you wanna yarn over and pull through both loops. Okay, and that's your first foundation single crochet. So now to make our second foundation single crochet, we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom stitch, which is right here. Let's see. Okay, so that is the bottom stitch. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to see, but I'll show you. So I'm gonna insert my hook right here, pick up both the front and the back loops of that bottom stitch. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll yarn over, pull through the stitch. Now with two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over, pull through just that first loop. And then with two loops on your hook again, you're gonna yarn over, pull through both loops. Okay, so that's our second foundation single crochet. Now hopefully you'll be able to see what this bottom stitch looks like a little bit better. So it's gonna be right down here. Okay right there. So we're gonna again insert our hook into the bottom stitch, making sure to pick up the front and back loops, just like so. Okay, then you'll yarn over, pull through the stitch. With two loops on your hook, you'll yarn over, pull through the first stitch, I'm sorry, first loop. Then with two loops on your hook, you'll yarn over, pull through both loops. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to see this a little bit better now. Okay, so these are the bottom stitches here. You can kind of see they're almost like V's. So for our fourth foundation single crochet, I'm gonna insert into the bottom stitch, pick up both loops, yarn over, pull through the stitch. With two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over, pull through the first loop. And then with two loops on your hook, you'll yarn over, pull through both loops. Okay, hopefully that made some sense but you're going to continue making these foundation single crochets until you reach the desired length for your arm warmer. So I'm gonna continue doing this until I have a total of 53 foundation single crochets. So I'll meet you guys back at the end. So I just finished making my 53 foundation single crochets and this is going to be my finished row one. So this is about eight inches worth of foundation single crochets. Now to get started with row two, what we're going to do is first chain one and then flip our work. And this chain one is never going to count as a stitch in this pattern. 
So for row two, what we're going to do is make a slip stitch in every single stitch all the way down, starting in this very first stitch right here. So I'm going to insert my hook through the whole stitch and then we'll make a slip stitch. And you want to make sure that you're not slip stitching too tight. You want to keep them kind of loose so that you can easily um, get into them later on. So in each stitch, we're going to be making one single, I'm sorry, one slip stitch. So we'll insert into the next stitch, slip stitch, insert into the next stitch, and slip stitch. So you're going to continue doing this all the way down row two with just one slip stitch in every single stitch. And then we'll make one uh, slip stitch in that very last stitch as well. Oops. Okay, so this is going to be row two. So it's just one row of slip stitches all the way down. Now for row three, we're going to chain up one and then flip our work. So this is where we are going to start getting our kind of knit rib look. So for row three, we're going to be working in the slip stitches that we made from row two, which are actually kind of just on the back of our stitches from row one. So as you can see, we have this like V, that's the top of the stitch right here. They look like Vs. And that's actually from row one, row one. So these are these uh, single crochet stitches right here. But then when we kind of turn it over a little bit, we can see on the back of those stitches, we have our slip stitches that we just made in row two. So for row three, we are gonna be working in the slip stitches from row two. So again, I've already chained one and flipped my work. So we're gonna be making one single crochet in each of our slip stitches from row two. And we'll start in this very first slip stitch right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into just that slip stitch. Okay, we'll pick up the front and back loops. Then you're gonna yarn over, pull through that stitch. And then with two chains on your hook, you'll yarn over, pull through those two. And that's our single crochet. So we're gonna be making one uh, single crochet in each slip stitch all the way down. So we'll go into the next slip stitch. Again, you can see that this V on the front is actually the top of the single crochet stitch from row one. Then when we flip to the back, we can see our single cro I'm sorry, our slip stitch from row two. So we're working in that slip stitch right there. Okay, and then we'll make a single crochet. And you're gonna continue doing this all the way down the row. So go in the next slip stitch, make a single crochet. And this is why you wanted your slip stitches to be kind of loose so that they are easy for you to get into. Because trust me, if you make these slip stitches too tight, it, this just won't be a fun project for you. All right, so continue making one slip stitch in each single crochet all the way down this row. All right, and now we're coming up to the very last stitch. So definitely make sure to get into that last stitch because sometimes it can be kind of difficult to see. Okay. So we just completed row three and now you can see the little knit or rib effect. So all we're gonna be doing for the rest of this rectangle, I guess, is repeating rows two and three. So I'll just demonstrate again what row two will look like. So you're gonna chain up one, flip your work, and now we're going to single, I'm sorry, slip stitch into every single stitch all the way down, starting in this very first stitch right here. So insert your hook through the whole stitch and make a slip stitch, making sure it's fairly loose. And you're gonna do that in every single stitch. So just one slip stitch all the way down for row four. Okay, 
Okay, make sure to get into this very last stitch as well. Oops. And slip stitch. Okay, we are done with row four. So for row five, we are just going to be repeating row three, but again, I'm just going to show you guys how to do it one more time. So this is what that slip stitch row is looking like. So for row five, we're going to chain up one, flip our work, and again, we're going to be making one single crochet in each slip stitch all the way down. So we're going to be starting in this very first slip stitch with one single crochet. So again, they're also, you can see the slip stitches are going to be on the back of the uh, single crochet stitches. Focus. Okay. So we're going to insert into the very first slip stitch right here and make a single crochet. Right, and you're going to do that in each single um, slip stitch all the way down. So again, one single crochet. Go into the next slip stitch that's on the back here. Okay, and single crochet. So you're just going to continue making one single crochet in each slip stitch all the way down this row. All right, and then make sure to get into that very last slip stitch. This one's honestly kind of hard to get into sometimes, but just make sure you get it. Okay, and that is gonna be the end of row five. So now all you're gonna do is continue to repeat rows two and three until you get a width, like until this is wide enough to comfortably stretch around like this part of your hand right here. So you're going to want it to be wide enough so that right about here it's able to comfortably wrap around. You want it to be not too loose and not too tight. You want it to fit very comfortably. So just continue to repeat rows two and three until you have a rectangle that again comfortably fits around your hand. All right, so I just finished up my rectangle here and I made a total of 56 rows. Now you want to make sure that you are ending on a row of single crochet. So I'll just lay this down flat for you guys and show you the width of my rectangle. It's just a little less than about five and a half inches long. So also just a quick thing to note, when you lay this down flat, at least this is what's happened for me, the rectangle kind of goes like in a decreasing fashion on one end. And I thought maybe I was like skipping some stitches along the way, but that did not turn out to be the case. It just kind of makes like a parallelogram, this stitch. I'm not exactly sure why. So if you are going throughout your project and you see that one of your ends looks like it's decreasing, it most likely isn't, but just check your stitch count to make sure that you're making the same amount of stitches all the way throughout this rectangle here. Now, if you want to like reshape this, you could obviously block this little rectangle, but I'm not going to do that. Um, we're just going to move right on into making the seam and finishing up the project. Now, I also told you I would show you like what this looks like on my hand before we get this all seamed up. So I'm just going to kind of fold this in half here. So this is what um, the rectangle looks like on my hand without me stretching it or anything. So you can just kind of see how it's sitting on my hand. It's kind of hard to show but it's looking something like this. So if I stretch this out a little bit, hold on. So if I stretch this just like slightly, this is what it looks like. Um, <laughs> this would be your stopping point. You want the wrist warmer to fit comfortably around your hand. I know I've said that like a million times, but this is what I mean. Like it's really not stretching too much, but it's not gonna be loose on your hand. Um, if anything, you can make the seam, try it on, and then see if it's too tight or too loose, and then take the seam out and 
just like add or subtract rows. It's really, it's really simple to do so. But let's just move right into making the seam and then we will be done with this wrist warmer. Now, when determining how wide to make the thumb hole, all I did was basically trial and error. I didn't use any type of measurement. Now we're gonna be starting the seam at the very top of our wrist warmer. So it's gonna be fairly simple to determine how long you want this seam to be. You'll just make a few of these slip stitches, which is how we're gonna seam this up. And then just put your wrist warmer on and you want it to sit about right here, like right below your fingers. And you can just continue making your slip stitch, slip stitch seam down your hand until you're comfortable with like the mobility of your thumb. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. And the seam that I made up top is about one inch long. So I will show you guys how we're gonna get started with this seam right now. So with your hook still on your project, you first want to chain up one, and then you want to fold your rectangle in half. And you wanna make sure that the knit ribbed pattern is on the outside, and then that just kind of flat single crochet look is on the inside. So once you have that, you wanna line these two rows up right here. And we're gonna be making a slip stitch seam down, working in the front loop only on the first row and the back loop only on this back row here. So I'm gonna kind of flip this around so that we're working from left to right. And even though I have my hook attached to the back row, I'm actually just going to insert my hook into the first stitch on the front, uh, front row, making sure to work into the front loop only. So this right here is our first stitch. I'm gonna insert my hook into the front loop only. Okay, so just pick up that one loop. And then I'm gonna insert my hook into the back loop only of the first stitch on the back row. So we're gonna insert just into the back stitch. So we're just picking up that one loop. So you see like I didn't pick up this front loop, just this back loop. Now I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all of the loops on my hook, including that chain one. And that will be our first slip stitch. So we're gonna do the same thing in the next stitch. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the front loop only of this second stitch on the front row. Okay, so I just picked up the front, not the back loop. Then I'm gonna insert my hook into the back loop only of the corresponding stitch on the back row. So I just picked up that one loop and then we're gonna slip stitch that all together. Okay, I'll show you this two more times. So going into the next stitch on the front loop only, I'm sorry, the front row, we're gonna insert a hook into the front loop only, then find that corresponding stitch on the back row and insert into the back loop only. Then we are going to slip stitch all that all together. And then once more, going into the next stitch. Front loop only. Back loop only, slip stitch. All right, so I've just made four of my slip stitch seams. So now you can like, you can try this on here for size, okay? So you can determine how many more slip stitches you want just by continuing, uh, just by continuing this row down. I'm going to do six more slip stitches until I have about one inch of the seam on the top half of my wrist warmer. So once I'm done with that, I'll come on back and show you what this is looking like. Okay, so I just finished making 10 of these slip stitches. I'm gonna chain up one, and I'm just gonna kind of pull this through a little bit, show you what this looks like again on my hand. Okay. So that's what it's looking like so far for me. 
You can continue making more if you wish or less, just whatever your preference is. So now what we're gonna do is just finish off the seam. So we're just going to, let's see, I've already chained up one. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. I suggest you guys also leave a bit of a tail just in case you want to add more um, slip stitches once you're done with the other half of this seam. Just like so. And then you're just gonna pull that on through. Okay, so that's what the first part of our seam is going to look like. So let's move on to the second half and we're gonna start down at the bottom over here. All right, so I already placed a slip knot on my hook right here. And now we're gonna be starting down at this end over here. As you can see, like it doesn't even necessarily line up completely because again, if we didn't block this, it's a little bit wonky, this rectangle. All you wanna do though is just force it to line up. So <laughs> just line it up like so. It may be a little strange looking right now, but I promise it will be all good at the very end. So we're gonna be doing the exact same thing that we did over at this end of the seam. We're just gonna start it off a little bit differently. So we're gonna be making slip stitches down the wrist former, working on the front loop only of the front, um, of the front panel and the back loop only of the back panel. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the very first stitch right here and I'm just inserting into the front loop only. And then in the corresponding stitch on the back, which is right here, I'm gonna insert into the back loop only. Urgh, sorry, you couldn't see that, just that back loop. And then I'm just going to make a slip stitch and pull through all of the loops that are on my hook. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all the loops that are on my hook. Okay. So now that we have this yarn attached, we are just going to be repeating the same thing we did over at this other end, just working in the front loop only on the front row and the back loop only on the back row. So in that very next stitch, I'm just gonna insert my hook in the front loop only, then find the corresponding stitch on the back row and make a slip stitch. Okay, so you are going to continue doing this. You're gonna continue making slip stitches until really you're just like comfortable with how the wrist warmer looks, feels, fits, all that good stuff. Show you once more. Okay. So yeah, just continue with this seam until you like put your wrist warmer on and you're comfortable with how um how wide this hole is so you want to make sure that you can move your thumb um yeah that's about it i'm gonna do about 33 of these slip stitch uh slip stitches all the way down so once i'm back at this point uh I'll come on back and show you guys what it is looking like so i just finished up the second seam which means i'm going to fasten off so i'll chain up one grab my scissors cut and then pull right on through okay <laughs> so that is pretty much it now the gap that i left right here is about two inches wide and then down here i made the seam about uh, five inches long so um i'll just try this on Yep, this is what it is fitting like. So the last thing you have to do is just like weave in these ends and then I'll come back once everything is complete. So once you've woven in all of your ends, you will officially be done with your wrist warmer. Now all you have to do is just repeat all of these steps for your second one and then this whole project will be officially completed. All right, guys, so that is gonna be it for this project. If you have any questions, then just pop them down below and I'll try to get back to you. But other than that, hope you guys have a great day, great week, all of that good stuff, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.